Hi everyone. I'll talk to you about my Grizzly G0759 machine that I purchased two months ago. I'll tell you about the good and the bad about it and if this machine would work for your applications or not. First off, I'm a machinist. I've been cutting steel for over 30 years. I served an 8,000 hour apprenticeship through the state of Connecticut at one place where I worked. And the state sent me a certificate that says I'm a machinist. So I did pass the requirements. This uh, cutting steel is not new to me. I've been doing it all my life. So it's a, it's a trade that I acquired and, and I run a variety of machines. I run, uh, at one time I ran uh, screw machines. I ran, uh, I run Bridgeport style machines, small mills, small manual lathes. I run uh, CNC machines. I run CNC mills. I, I run CNC uh, blades. And the CNC stuff runs on Fanuc controls. Some of them are high in hand, but they've done away with those. I have uh, been sent to school for the Mastercam training, so I, I program my own machines now with Mastercam, or I program them longhand at the controls at the shop. My needs for this machine are mainly for gunsmithing and for machine repair around the property. I have a large piece of land here and, and sometimes the machines need service and I need to uh, cut something or fabricate something to keep them running. Over at the shop where I work, they uh, change ownership and now I used to do all my moonlighting at the shop and do my what I need, needed to do at the shop. but they. Uh, they changed their policies, so at 3.30 lights out, you go home. And I needed something to continue my, uh, my, op my uh, hobbies and my work around here. So I needed a small mill for the property. I was looking at bridge ports for a while, but the bridge port size machines are just too, too big for my garage over here, because this is one of two garages. And this garage is a heated garage where I park my vehicles in. And if I have a big machine in here, it's going to affect my parking space. So I that ruled it out. Plus the requirements of the power. Bridgeport's run three phase. You have to convert the power over it, and uh, that'll be timely and expensive. So I went with the uh, smaller machine. And uh, the Grizzly here, they have good feedback online. They have customer support. And uh, I went with this. Now I'm not going to CNC this machine. I want it mainly for uh, one piece at a time. If you guys were looking into uh, making 5, 10, 20 pieces and trying to sell them or something, then CNC is the way to go. But for my application, I wanted a manual machine. Main thing about this machine I like, you want to get a square column. Don't play with a, uh, a round column like a drill press machine. Because if you raise the head, if you're doing something and you're drilling a hole, let's say, and you want to raise the head to get a longer drill in there or whatever, you're going to lose your positioning. On a square head like this, you raise the head up or down, you're going to be in the same spot. So that's very important. So you definitely want to get a square head machine. So this little machine here does fit the bill. Now when the machine was expected to be delivered, I prefabbed a uh, base for it. This base is uh, 4 by 4 square tubing, 3 8 thick, and it's 3 feet long. And I have some heavy gauge aluminum, uh, I have a heavy gauge angle iron that I put, I'm trying to get the thing to move here. So I have a heavy uh, angle iron that I welded up onto this base over here. This does two purposes. It gives it some weight. It gives me a way to level the machine. And I have MSC uh, machine levelers underneath. So each one is put down and I could uh, level the machine to the floor. The problem with the machine after I had it assembled, I used my engine crane to pick it up and mount it over here. The problem was was that it still was moving 
forward and back and I didn't like it. So I added these uh, threaded rods and I bolted it right to the wall. So now there's no way this machine is going to move on me. It's 100% more solid. And I have uh, threaded rods on both sides of the machine. Now if the machine moves, I'm moving the wall. So uh, this works out really well. You might have to modify your machine as well by anchoring it to the wall if need be. And then I take my toolboxes and I throw my toolboxes on its legs. So that gives it more weight as well. One box is inspection tools and one is my wrenches and whatever. I purchased a lot of items through eBay and MSC. They have, uh, I bought cutters and I bought the, uh, the holders. These are end mill holders with the, with the set screws. I got more stuff from Grizzly, the uh, R8 collets. All this, everything if I can, I put it inside the machine, gives it more weight. Got my face mills in there I bought from Grizzly. I bought a large, large lot of uh, carbide from uh, eBay, some, some company going out of business and they're advertising stuff. So I drop a, a big bill and got some, a lot of cutters and stuff, end mills and carbide. And I'm trying to keep everything three quarter inch and smaller for this machine because the, the call it's, it's a small machine so you want to, so you want to keep it, uh, the sizes small, keep the torque down. I purchased this item over here on eBay also. It's a, it's a 40 tapered uh, bench block, I guess you call it. You take your, your holders, and if I have a face mill, I want to change the inserts. It's an easy way just to drop it into to the, uh, to the bench block. It's a 40 taper adapter. So for 100 bucks, you get this all set up. It's something I don't have to make. I made the little... Uh, this is a uh, part of the spindle break. I'll talk to you about that in a moment. Now the machine takes a, a 110 power and you do need to have good power coming into the for the machine because uh, last week I was running my air compressor out of the back garage. It also is 110 and whenever the air compressor would fire up it would kill the power to the, the mill. The machine would stop spinning. And I realized after the third time that it was the air compressor that was tripping the power for the, for the mill. So you gotta have good power coming in, have its own dedicated power source. In this house here, I have a panel in the basement and I have a line coming straight into the garage here. That's a 20 amp circuit. So what I did is, but unfortunately the machine is on the wrong wall for the plug so I just ran a uh, I went to Home Depot and I got a, a 12 gauge extension cord and I stapled it around the wall and I come, I'm bringing the wire down behind the machine so I know I'm giving it the, the machine all its power it needs unfortunately I can't share the power with it I gotta put my air compressor on, on the regular circuit but that's not a big deal it's just something to be aware of and the machine does require a lot of current and uh, you're not going to be able to share with mama's toaster off the kitchen and run the machine at the same time. That's not going to work out. The machine has two types of fuses in back. Inside the power control you have a 10 amp and a 15 amp fuse. They're 5 millimeter by 20 millimeter. They're kind of hard to locate. I was lugging the machine a while back and, and uh, a few weeks ago. And I did pop a fuse, so that's why I know there's two types of fuses in back. You need to level the machine when you get it assembled. Take a little level and put it on the table. And then you, uh, you level the machine up. Take a WD-40 or kerosene. And then you wipe all the cosmoline off the machine. And I use mobile whey oil. This stuff here is vector number two. That's what the shops use for oil. And that's what I'm going to continue to use for this machine. Take a paintbrush, and after everything is clean, take a paintbrush and you wipe all the surfaces down with this whey oil. And it's really, really good stuff. And uh, it clings to everything, and, uh, and uh, this is the best protection you can give your machine. 
don't spray it down with WD-40 or something. That's not the right stuff. Use uh, Vectra oil number two or uh, something similar for your applications. When you mount this, when you start to tram this, when you start to align the table, first the vise will be off. And you want to square the column to the table first. That is because the table could be, the, the column could be off. It may not be perfect, perfectly straight and square to the table. You might be off forward or back or side to side. So you want to either get a good machine of square and put it on the table and indicate off of that to make sure that you are in fact straight. Or put a, uh, a pin in the spindle and run the column up and down and indicate off of that. To make sure that you are in fact straight on the column because what could happen is you could be uh, let's suppose you ignore the column and just tram the head and then you raise the head up four or five inches and what could happen is you could be off position so you want to make sure that the column is in fact square to the table then you tram the head by sweeping the table you see other guys online doing that just sweep the table there's different methods of of uh, tramming the head, but you just want to, there's four bolts up inside over here, and then you just put the uh, indicator and you go around the base of the table. Now this machine, with the vise off, I go back and forth with it, and I notice that the, these corners over here are in fact higher, so it's shaped like a spoon, this machine, by like a thousand and a half to two thousands. Not real critical for a homeowner machine, but it's something to be aware of. They could have done a better job with that. I attached the power feed to it. That was a $300 item. That's a pretty cool feature. It saves you a lot of manual cranking back and forth. So uh, that's definitely a, a good thing. Unfortunately, on this machine, because it has the readout, you've got the bracket right over here. And the motor here will hit the bracket, so that will cause you uh, interference. So I'm losing two inches of travel. They do provide with the uh, with the power feed these uh, table stops, so you have to adjust the stop so when it travels on rapid, it's not going to uh, it's not going to smash up over here and blow a fuse or whatever. You can reset it down right here. You want us to you reverse your can in this way. Rapid is right here. You want a neutral, you just throw the lever like this and you can just crank it by hand. So that's all that is all pretty cool stuff. You might have to move the, the handle slightly in order to engage it the way the gears uh, line up. I was reading online about this machine and they said that uh, it's got a plastic gear up on top and inside the head and uh, those fail frequently. So I did buy a couple spare parts for it. I bought some, some gears for it. Other people complain about the controllers burning up and the, uh, and the uh, circuit boards. So I bought some circuit boards for it already and I bought a spare motor for it. So down the road if something would happen, I did my parts box, I'll just go inside and grab what I need. One bad thing about this machine is that the Grizzly T-nuts that I purchase do not fit the Grizzly machine. You have to grind all the T-slots down in order to fit them inside the T-slots. So before I even put the vise down I gotta grind all my T-slots or T-nuts rather to get them to fit the table then I could bolt up the vise. Now this is a Grizzly vise, it's a 5 inch vise, it actually fits pretty good on the table. However I had to uh, cut the face of it right here, you got like 2 inches or an inch and a half of material. I brought it to my back garage and I, I just chopped off the, 
the end of it. That'll give me more clearance from here to the, uh, the column. I took a uh, grinder after I had it set. This is the kind of vise with the uh, rotating uh, base on it. So after I had it all squared up over here and aligned, I put a little flat over here and I put a hacksaw with my a little cutting wheel. And I put zero on the machine right here so I know where my where my dial is. So if I turn it 45 degrees or something, I could quickly go back to about where I was. I took, uh, now this machine comes with uh, keys, little square pieces that thread that go up underneath the machine, up underneath the vise over here. You want to put keys in the machine, so then as you're cutting, you're not going to, uh, uh, two little screws, this is going to move, okay? So you want to put some keys on here to help support it and hold it down before it doesn't twist on you. So I went... I measured their keys up, and the keys are 552 diameter, or 552 thousandths thick, the metric size. They say these are half inch. They're not half inch, they're 511. So you have to cut the, uh, put the keys in the vise over here, and then cut them down uh, to about 511, and then try, make sure they fit. And once they fit, then you're good, and you could put them underneath the uh, vise, and then you can use it. But that's one thing here I didn't, I didn't care for, the, that the, uh, the T-slots don't even fit their, their table. So you got to spend a night just to grind them down and get all your stuff to work before you even put the vise on. So that's something you have to do also on these Chinese machines. Now make sure you get the proper uh, holders and so on. You can't take a Jacob's Chuck you can't take a jig up chuck and expect to mill with this thing. It's meant only for drilling. It's not meant for lateral uh, torque or whatever. These are only for drilling. So you have to get the right holders. You have to get the holders like with this with the screw, the set screw. These are uh, end mill holders. And then you have the end mills. This is a, uh, a roughing end mill, or they call them a hog mill. You have the slot in it. When you put these things in, you got to make sure that you put them in and line up the slot with the end mill. And as you go and tight it, make sure you always pull the end mill out and tight it. Because what happens is they have a tendency to pull out of the holder. And then if you're cutting something and your uh, the end mill pulls out, it'll be too deep and you'll ruin your job. So you want to make sure that when you when you pull these, when you put these things in, you line them up with the slot, but then you pull the end mill out as you tighten it. That's very important. It goes for any machine as far as that goes. It doesn't matter what you're running. When you're milling on these things, and you have the end mill in the holder and you're milling, and you bring the head down, before you, you, you lock your, your stops, make sure that you pull the head back up then lock it. Because if you don't, this machine and other machines will do the same thing. As you're milling, they'll just drop down. And again, you'd be too deep, you might break a tool, scrap your piece, whatever. So whenever you lower this head down, you want to stop, add a little bit of tension to the screw to pick up the head, then lock it. And that's a big thing to remember when you're milling on these machines. This one especially, because it's a, it's a small machine and uh, doesn't have the, the mass to it. I last two weeks ago I was milling something, I was doing a gun part over here. And I said, well, I'm going to keep the RPMs of the machine down, so I put it in high range. And I was uh, lugging with a 3 8 end mill, I was chopping some stuff out. And I blew a fuse on the thing. So I blew the 10 amp fuse in back. So if you're, uh, you're going to be cutting with this thing or whatever, put it in low range and so the machine has the torque because the motor doesn't have the power behind it. It'll, it'll spin fast, but it doesn't have the, the real torque behind it. So you just make sure that you put it in low range and take moderate cuts and the thing will do a really good job otherwise. I replaced a draw bolt on this machine because I didn't care for this Grizzly uh, bolt that they had. 
this is what came with the machine originally. And you got a little spacer. And this is a spacer that, that aligns the bolt and keeps it, keeps it straight. And what I did is I modified this piece right here. And uh, I modified it. So I threw this piece up into the where it belongs. This is all this bush, all this bushing does is just keep the uh, keep the draw bolt square and straight. Because if it doesn't, if you don't have this piece in, it's gonna wobble and you'll throw you making sure you have some vibration. I found a nine and three quarters inch bolt on eBay. It's actually a grade eight bolt with the lines on it. It's good quality stuff. Made a bushing with my lathe. So now I have this and it, it lines up exactly to the same length. So I just take this and I drop it inside. This here is a Priest Tools spindle lock, or spindle break. And this little pin is what I made out of a 3 8 uh, end mill. And I, that's why it's hex on top. I just shaped it and I cut it with my lathe. I like a small tool, just stick it in there. You might have to turn the spindle slightly to align the, the pin. I like this Priest Tools feature because I could use two hands now. I don't need three hands to, to hold it. Get the keyway. Just line it up. Turn the bolt on top. And that's it. You're tight. Ready to go. Now when you run the machine, you have a uh, Now when you run the machine, you have a, a high and low setting right here. And then you have uh, the power over here. So when you turn this on, you have the uh, F and R, forward and reverse, right over here. To choose forward, this is your RPM of the machine. So you turn it, I'll put it on low, uh, high range. It's on high over here. And you just hold the button down momentarily and it, it comes on. You want more RPM, you just turn it up. And you see with that bushing on top, if you didn't have that bushing, this thing would be wobbling all over the place. But that keeps it nice and true. To stop the machine, you can grab this. That stops it. Or you hit this button right here. Or the button right here. That's how you stop the machine. The readout here is pretty cool. This is one of the best features about this machine. It's got glass scales. It's a really a high quality readout. It does trigonometry functions and stuff, but all I really care about is positioning and to zero it out. To zero it out, I just hit this X0, Y0, and Z0. And then as you grab your, your, your levers over here and turn it, you can see that the things are counting. So you go back to zero if you want. Same thing with the uh, the power feed. You can just turn it on over here. And as it's cranking, you can see that the machine is moving. So this is a really, really cool uh, readout over here. The same thing with the, uh, the column. You grab the head over here and you crank the head down. I knock the locks out. If I turn the head down, you can see the thing is uh, actually moving down. Now on the on the quill over here, it's not a uh, power feed on the quill; it's manual. So you have this little lock on the side over here. You have to turn this knob, and then over here you have. You can, I don't know if you can see the readout, but as you turn this knob, I don't know if you can see it or not. Maybe. If you turn this knob, then the uh, the quill is moving down. You can see it counting down. You can see the handle moving. So that's that's what that how that feature works. It's not really a power feed per se, but uh, 
it's a controlled feed if you want to drill a conibore or something you're able to hold depths so in closing I think the machine is a, a good quality good quality machine but it's not something that is user friendly right out of the box it would take you some time to get it set up and get it mounted and get it level get it square and then uh, to run the machine again you gotta buy a lot of tooling for it the machine cost me like 1900 bucks but I think I spent probably over 2000 in tooling between eBay and uh, the holders and vice and all the accessories that you need so yeah you'll spend some money if you buy one of these things but uh, I think the machine has good quality after I got it set up I, I could trust it and I could do things with it so I recommend the machine well thanks very much for watching See you again.